Hey there, this is Andrew, and I am bringing you another Keyforge deck reveal slash review. Uh, this one is one that is not completely fresh. I opened it last night and played it on stream. Uh, well, not on stream, but on uh, over Messenger, over Facebook Messenger with Mark. Uh, and uh, it's, it seems like a really good deck. I'm very excited about it. Um... It is called Sensei Chi Scar Torch. Uh, it's Mars Shadows Untamed. Uh, that's a pretty fun house combo. And uh, yeah, let's let's jump right into it. Oh, really quick, I guess before I start on the deck review, um, it's worth pointing out. So this was my first uh, Age of Ascension deck opening outside of the starter set. I did a starter set opening. First, and it had boxes that were like the old boxes. This this box is reclosable. Um, it's not like a fantastic storage solution, but it's fine. Um, yeah, and then of course the uh, there's the notorious. Well, I don't need to cover that up. I've scanned it. Uh, deck list change. Uh, let me adjust my zoom while we're looking at this. And um, the interesting change from the way it used to be is that now you can see uh, commons and then uncommons and then rare, whereas it used to be that you would see, uh, you would just see cards organized by type. So you would see actions and then artifacts and then creatures and then upgrades. So this one only has actually two rares, but... Um, they're pretty good. I'm I'm pretty happy to see them. Um, so yeah, let's let's get started. So we'll start with Mars. Uh, we have Collector Worm, two power, five armor, and uh, when it fights, it archives the creature it fights. If that creature leaves your archives, put it in its owner's hand instead. Now I think that well, so I know for a fact that because fight happens, the fight effect is actually after fight. That's the default uh, timing of these keywords um because it's after fight that means that if the creatures or if collector worm is destroyed in the fight its ability doesn't trigger but i also think that means that if uh if the creature is fighting dies so if you fight like something with one or two power it, that thing dies um it doesn't go to the archives because it's destroyed first so it's really only useful for things that are you know at least bigger than two um this is also uh why in another deck i had this and i i was playing him, I didn't put Blood of Titans on my Collector Worm because uh, that would actually make it less likely to, to archive things. It would be more likely to kill them, but not archive them. Uh, okay, Glixel Proliferator. This one's fun. Three power, uh, you reap with it, and when you reap, um, if it's on a flank, then you archive a Mars card from your discard pile. Uh, and that's a pretty powerful effect. Ixixly Fix Finger. This thing is two power and two armor. It's elusive, and it gives all your other Martian creatures plus one armor. That was pretty good if we have a lot of Mars creatures, which uh, so far so good. Uh, Mind Warper is two power with elusive, and when uh, and you can exhaust it to make an enemy creature capture one from its own side. That's uh, returning from Call the Archons. Everything so, else so far is new. Uh, you have Mind Warper. Uh, it's sort of like slow steel. It goes out of the opponent's amber pool onto their creature, and when that creature is killed, you're going to get it uh, from them. Tixel Beam Buckler. It's four power, one armor, and when you play it, you deal two damage to a creature and move it to either flank of its controller's battle line. When I first saw this card, I thought um, it didn't seem so good, but actually doing the two damage on play is pretty solid. Um, it has the one armor, so it, it makes it gives it some longevity. And uh, if you don't kill a creature, being able to move it around so you can deal two damage to any creature, uh, any of, of your, well, any creature, and you move it to either flank of its controller's battle line. So um, you can maybe kill something that's small and elusive, just something annoying, or um, if there's something that you would really like to move around, you can move it around as well. Um, something with taunt maybe, or with a uh, an effect that cares about its neighbors um you 
can move it around, and that seems like a pretty powerful ability, um, especially with so many things in the set that care about that. Um, and there are three of these, so uh, I don't mind that at all. We have Ixilx Dominator returning from Call of the Archons, nine power, one armor, taunt. So it's going to protect some of your uh, creatures you really want to stay out, like maybe the Fix Finger, the Proliferator, the Collector Worm. Uh, some of the others we'll see in the future, but it comes into play stunned. Zizik Shockworm. This one is uh, pretty oppressive. This is also a good thing to put next to the Dominator. Um, it's really going to make your opponent's life hard. It's three power, one armor, and after an enemy creature reaps, you stun it. Um, that, yeah, your opponent won't like this. We have a combat pheromones. It's an artifact that when we play it, it gains an amber, and it has omni, sacrifice it, and you can use up to two other Mars cards this turn. We have so many other creatures, we have so many creatures, there's a decent chance we're going to have two Mars cards that we want to use. So um, it's probably going to be useful. Uh, Zorg is seven power. He enters play stunned, but before and before he fights, uh, you stun the creature that he's fighting and the creature's neighbors. At seven power, you're probably going to kill the creature you're fighting. So, uh, so there's that. But um, but you get to stun the neighbors, and if it is something that's going to live through it, you're going to stun it. And because this is a before fight effect, it'll take place even if you're fighting something that'll kill Zorg. So that's pretty powerful. That's why it play stun to make up for that and then we have hypnotic command um that's pretty crazy so uh hypnotic command is an action it's a rare and when you play it for each friendly mars creature you choose an enemy creature to capture one amber from their own side um and uh there are 10 mars creatures in this deck so you know the ceiling on this is basically that you do that same slow steal it works the same as mind warper does um and, you know, the ceiling is that we get to do that ten, for 10, um, effectively slow steal 10 amber. Uh, and my understanding of the way this resolves is that, um, you know, if you, unless they have five friendly Mars creatures, I'm going to five times choose an enemy creature to capture one from their own side. It doesn't say different enemy creatures, so I could put them all on the same creature if I wanted um, and then kill it and get all that amber. So it's it's a pretty strong card, especially with so many Mars creatures. And it doesn't even say friendly, ready Mars creature. Uh, so that's pretty good. And also, I just want to point out, in this Mars set, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, returning cards from Call of the Archons, but the other seven are new ones, and that's uh, pretty typical, I think. Um, at, yeah. Yeah. Um, Fun seeing all the new cards. Okay, uh, into shadows we have furtive investors. It's an action, gain an amber, and if your opponent has more amber than you, gain one for each key your opponent has forged. So it's sort of like uh, a Doctor Escutera, but instead of having a four power creature, you get an extra amber, uh, but only if your opponent has more amber than you. Knuckles Bolton, three power, elusive and skirmish. Lamindra is a one power with deploy. So you can put her uh, in the middle of your battle line if you want. And uh, she has elusive, and she also gives her neighbors elusive. Um, yeah, we've already seen some things we might want to put that on, so that's pretty cool. And, you know, this actually works a little bit. Like, it's a similar effect to having a creature with taunt, um, but it's doing it with elusive, so it's a little, you know, more shadowsy. Okay. Ronnie Risk Clocks, two power, and when you play him, you steal one. Uh, but if your opponent has seven or more, you steal two instead. So uh, that's pretty cool. And my, my understanding of this is it's if your opponent has seven at the time you play it because it's a it's an instead effect, so it, it replaces the steal one. Um, I th think this could have been worded a little more clearly by just saying if your opponent has seven or more, steal two. Otherwise, steal one. But anyway, it's fine. Um that's, that's my understanding of how it works. Swindle. Uh, so this card just steals three. And that's crazy good. So it has Alpha and Omega. Um, this has to be the first thing you do on your turn. And it also ends your, your step three. Um, throwing Stars. When you play it, you deal one damage to up to three creatures. You gain one Amber for each creature destroyed this way. 
um, that's pretty good. Now we haven't seen any one power creatures yet. I know. That, oh no, we have we have uh, Lamindra. You know, we hope the, maybe the opponent has some one power creatures, um, and I know that there are a couple more coming up in here. So um, we'll see. We'll see those. Um, Umbra. This one's uh, now. Let's see. Are any of the others returning from Call the Archons? So far in Shadows, um, this is our first returning from Call of the Archons card. Umbra, two power, skirmish, and fight, steal one. That's really good. Uh, now we have two copies of Lights Out. This is also returning from Call of the Archons. Gain an Amber, return two enemy creatures to their owner's hand. That's, that's really nice um, for getting annoying stuff off the board. It's fantastic. Uh, little Nif. This uh, Little Nif is really nice. I really like her. Um, she's two power... Omega, Deploy, and Elusive. Um, so Deploy, again, means that you can drop her in the middle of your battle line if you want. Uh, she has Elusive, so she's hard to kill. And um, after her neighbor is used to fight, steal one. That's that's a really powerful effect. Um, she has Omega, which means you have to, when you play her, it's going to end your step three. So, um, so you can't, like, play her, and then fight with the stuff because um, it's going to end your step three. She has to survive until uh, until your next turn to be for you to able, be able to get that benefit, but it's still a pretty good benefit. Um, yeah, and uh, I had one turn playing uh, our game last night where I was able to actually um, place her down and then go on, uh, I think it was... Untamed. Anyway, I was able to fight with like four creatures. Uh, I fought with the one next to her. It died in the fight, so and I stole one. So now there's a new one that's next to her. I fought with it. It died in the fight. Next one d fights, dies. Next one fights. Um, so I was able to steal a total of four off of that ability, plus then another one with the one that fought over here. It was pretty crazy. So um, definitely a powerful card. That obviously makes her a good target for your opponent to kill uh, with priority. Um, cool. Redlock uh, is three power. He has skirmish, and at the end of your turn, if you do not play any creatures this turn, gain an amber. Um, in a deck with 25 creatures, that seems unlikely to fire very often. But if he is on the board when you play Swindle, then then that turns your turn into you know steal three, gain one. Um, that's really the only situation where I envision this happening. But uh, three power skirmish, that's not bad. Uh, and then we have Key of Darkness. Uh, so Key of Darkness is a rare, it's a key cheating card. When you play it, you forge a key at plus six, the current cost. But if your opponent has no amber, then it's plus two current cost instead. So, um, you know, if you've had a good turn of stealing some stuff with, with some of these other cards, um, you got your opponent down to zero, then you can forge for eight, which is really good. Um, otherwise, forging for 12 is not so good. But, you know, if you're worried about your opponent having a bunch of steel, then maybe it's the right move. All right, on to uh, Untamed. We have Darna. Um, so Darna really likes for your creatures to be damaged when she comes out, because when you play her, you gain one amber for each damage-friendly creature. Um, she can reap to heal two damage from a friendly creature. So you bring her out, and then you're, you can maybe, you know, repair some of that damage that's that your creatures have sustained uh, we have two of these in here um, that's pretty solid amber generation assuming you know our creatures are taking some damage but not dying next we have fang house uh it's a three power beast with assault three and hazardous three um so it's it's really interesting in that you know so the assault three makes it good for killing elusive stuff the hazardous three makes it really hard for your opponent to attack um they're going to take three damage before they before the fight even starts, and then they'll take another three. Um, you know, if this had like I don't know, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent ability. It's even better if you put some you know upgrade or something on it that really makes it a threat to Amber. But it's it's a solid card, um, good utility card. Full Moon for the remainder of the turn, you gain Amber and Amber each time you play a creature. Um, that, by the way, um, sorry, I should have said Key of Darkness is returning from Call the Archons. Um, so is Full Moon and Key Charge. Um, Key Charge, when you play it, you lose an Amber, 
And if you do, you may forge a key at current cost. So most of the time that means you're you know, losing seven amber total to forge a key uh, in the middle of your turn, which is not bad. I'd, I'm, I would happily pay one extra to just have it out of the way and not have to worry about my amber getting stolen. Uh, Nox is a three power creature um, that gets plus three power for each neighbor it has. So if you have, if it has a neighbor on each side, then it's a nine power creature, which is pretty solid. Um, we have two of those. We have a Rusnar. Rusnar is a four power uh, creature that has the, the effect fight, destroy an artifact. If that artifact had an amber bonus, you gain that much amber. Um, destroying opponent's artifacts is great on its own. Um, if you do get a bonus amber from it, that's fantastic. Uh, Song of Spring gains you an amber, shuffles any number of friendly untamed creatures from your hand, discard pile, or battle line back into your deck. Uh, we only have one of these in here, but it's uh, it, it worked out pretty well. I was able to return the uh, Darnas and the next couple cards that you'll see, um, or to the last two anyway, uh, into my deck and get more value out of them, which was pretty fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a solid card. Um, yeah, I, I really like it, especially with so many creatures. It's just good. Uh, we have Tantadlin, which is nine power, uh, but it only deals two when fighting. And but when it uh, when it, it when you use it to fight, it discards a random card from your opponent's archive. So that's nice if you're up against you know maybe a Mars that is archiving your own stuff, or you know a Logos that's just archiving their stuff. Um, probably it's high value stuff that's going in their archives, and so knocking it out is uh, probably a pretty useful effect. Um, yeah, and then at the end we have two copies of Bumblebird, which is a one power creature with alpha, so you have to play it first thing on your turn, but when you play it, you put two plus one power counters on each other friendly untamed creature. And so that game last night, I had like four plus one power counters on some of my creatures. Um, and, you know, and I think this is a really good, uh, target the, the Bumblebirds and the Darnas are good targets for Song of Spring, even if they're on your board. They're still probably worth shuffling in because they have these nice play effects. So um, anyway, so yeah, this this deck did really well. It had good Amber generation, a lot of steel, uh, if things are played out right. Decent board control. Um, the Lights Out and Shadows gives good board control. The big creatures in Untamed, obviously. Uh, and then in Mars, too, I had pretty good board control. Um, stun if they reap. Um, some taunt. So, uh, you know, some amber control, amber generation, uh, board control, even some artifact control. So this feels like a pretty well-rounded deck. Um, and with 25 creatures, it has the possibility of getting just getting a really solid foothold. Of course, you know, your opponent can just blast everything in one turn. But... Uh, yeah, has a really good chance to get to get a strong footing and uh, be able to push in for a win. So that's that. Um, that was uh, Sensei, uh, yeah, Sensei Chi Scar Torch. Um, I'm excited to get this to a Chainbound event and start seeing how it performs, uh, like, you know, in a competitive setting. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me and keep on forging.